In John chapter 4, Jesus was conversing with the woman at the well, and he said, The hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. That's one of your titles. That's one of the challenging names God has placed upon you as a child of God. You are encouraged by this verse to be a true worshiper. And there's two ways you qualify. You worship God in spirit and you worship God in the truth. Now let's break that down a little bit. If you'll go to your Bibles, you'll notice that the word spirit has a small letter S, not a capital letter S. So it's not referring to the Holy Spirit. It's referring to your regenerated spirit, the born again part of you, the new creation man that was birthed in you when you invited the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And that part of you is connected with God in a covenant relationship that gives you access into his presence so that you can commune with him. No other religion in the world provides provides this. So to be a true worshiper, you have to have a regenerated spirit. You must be born again where you receive a new spirit inside of you that is connected to God. Secondly, to be a true worshiper, you must worship in the truth. Now there's about five ways that can be applied. I'm only going to touch on two or three. First of all, to worship him in the truth is to worship God with the true revelation of his nature. See, there are lovers of God and worshipers of God in many religions. I've met Hindus who were truly lovers of God. I've met uh, Muslims that were truly lovers of God, and yet they had a wrong conception of the nature of the Godhead. In Hinduism, they believe that God on an ultimate level is Brahman, an impersonal life force that flows through all of creation. And then in Islam, you have the belief that God on an ultimate level is Allah, who is absolutely one. And uh, one of the worst sins in the Islamic faith is to attribute divinity to anything or anyone other than Allah, which is the sin they call shirk. Uh, which qualifies us as Christians to be blasphemers in their sight because we say that Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. So you can be a worshiper of God, a lover of God, and be a Hindu or be a Muslim and yet never connect with God because you don't understand the nature of the Godhead. Now, we as Bible believers understand that the Godhead is comprised of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet these three are one, and Jesus said, I am the door. So if we worship God with the understanding, with the comprehension, see, Jesus told the woman at the well, you worship, you know not what. He never told her she was not a worshiper, he just let her know she was not worshiping correctly because she did not have the understanding of the nature of God. But when you and I come to him realizing that the God of heaven and earth is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one, then we have automatic access into his presence because we have the true revelation of him. And then when we go to the Bible and we find the truth in the pages of the word of God and we apply that truth to our lives, we are also worshiping him in the truth. So those are two ways to be a true worshiper. You worship God in the spirit, you worship God in the truth, and the father is searching the world over for people like you.